Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixon. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? And Bella. <laughs> yeah, we got an extra guest. <laughs> in the audience for the first time. We yeah. have to watch the cursing. I, we're, we're, we're performing in front of a live audience. <laughs> in studio. In studio, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so how's it going? Yeah, it's going, you know. Right. How was your trip? Um, it was fine. Uh, I had a really good time. Uh, you know, say for the world to hear, congratulations to Bill and Jen ah. on their marriage last year that we couldn't celebrate till now because they live in New Jersey. <laughs> so, so they've loosened things up enough in New Jersey that y'all could have a, a gathering. <laughs> yeah, I actually I was a little surprised. So I went ahead. You know. It was a really an illustration to me, like planning this trip and taking this trip. Um, how absurd like a lot of these all restrictions of the, all are. Of the stuff. Yeah, so um, much of it. Yeah. So let, let's start with this. Now, I, I'll, you know, I went ahead and got a coronavirus test just in case because New Jersey's one of the states that has been really restrictive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to end up in a position where I couldn't, you know, like celebrate. So Bill's marriage. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, like, um, well, so I have a question just logistically with this. So you got a mm-hmm. test before you left. Yeah. Were you issued some kind of card or something with that test? No, or I, just, just I, just printed, I just printed the results. You print the results? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm I mean, just, I have like an online chart thing, which yeah. I don't like, but you don't have a choice anymore. Yeah. Um, they put all your stuff online, whether you access it or not. So yeah, you right. may as well, you know, take advantage of the convenience. And, um, so yeah, I, uh, I actually got a rapid test and a PCR test. It's a good thing that I did both, um, mm. because I had the results for the rapid test and the results for the PCR test didn't come in until I was in the air on the way back. Oh, wow. <laughs> so <laughs> that didn't do me any good. Yeah. Um, and apparently it was kind of a waste of money then as well. Actually, the whole thing was because nobody ever checked. Nobody right, ever checked my checked. papers. <laughs> you, you never had to show your papers. <laughs> no. But uh, well, that was kind of the, what I was getting at. So you carry. So you get this test that you print it out, mm-hmm. and like theoretically, at least when you go in places, you have to show it to somebody. Hey, well, look, this maybe. is my negative test. I mean, I, I don't know. And how hard, difficult would that negative test be to forge? Like oh, now, not, not now very. that you've got one, you've got like a template oh, yeah, to yeah. use. It's just like a little printout. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it would be easy as far as I could tell. I mean, the only thing that you'd have to worry about is if they wanted to check on it and they like called yeah. my physician to make sure that they were real. Do you think your physician would take the call? Uh, well, I think <laughs> at least they have an answering service that says, you that know, would, family mm. care or whatever the name of it is and yeah. so forth. So at least it would seem legitimate, but then that means that I could probably fake a result. I mean, cause this would have been over a weekend too. So it's not like there would have been anybody in the office there. Exactly. To yeah. No, I don't just know. Just curious. No, no real reason. Just wondering. Yeah. Um, so no, the, the, the first thing that stood out to me was, um, so my flight, yeah. right? So I'm flying from uh, Pensacola to Philadelphia. Yeah. And uh, on American. Um, and by the way, just as a side note, like Americans had a bunch of problems recently and their service is not that great. And there's problems with American. Yeah. Um, so why do I fly American? Well, we don't really have a lot of flights with Southwest here, yeah. uh, which is supposed to be one of the better ones. But I don't really know because I don't ever get to fly. Because Southwest. you never get to fly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other one, big one here, obviously, is Delta. Yeah. And the reason that I fly American instead of Delta is because if I'm going north um, and I fly Delta, then I have to fly through Hartsfield, which Ooh. is a miserable airport. It's it's like I've only flown a couple of times. One of those times was uh, we went through Hartsfield. And yeah. Dude, that was a nightmare. Like yeah. I was like, is this how all airports are? Because this sucks. Yeah. I don't know if this still circulates, but, uh, you know, the joke used to be, uh, what does Delta stand for? Yeah. Damn, everything leaves through Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> um, now, I lived in Atlanta at a time, so I flew quite a bit of Delta then because I was flying out of there anyway. Yeah. And I had you to had nav- to deal with it. Yeah. I had to navigate Hartsfield regardless, so I may as well you know, yeah. fly Delta. Yeah. Um, but from here, if I'm flying Delta if I, and I'm going north, I have to connect through Atlanta. Yeah. And if I'm going west, then I have to connect through DFW. Yeah. Um, and DFW is no picnic either. Really? Um, 
So I fly American because if I'm flying north on American, then I connect through Charlotte, yeah. which is a fairly easy airport to navigate. I mean, it's big, but it's, you know, it's fairly but it's easy. set up to, well. Yeah, it's fairly easy to navigate. Yeah. And going west, I go through Houston, which is a fantastic airport. Uh-huh, like, it's yeah. kind of grimy and whatever, but uh, they have this spoken... I mean, it's Houston, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have this spoken wheel set up, so you're never very far from anything. Yeah. And, um, and I wish they had set up all airports like that. It seems like it would be so easy. But yeah. anyway, that's the reason I fly America. I got gotcha. you. So I don't have to deal with Atlanta or Dallas-Fort Worth. Yeah. Um, but I had a direct flight to Philadelphia from Pensacola. Oh, nice. On the way up. Yeah. I had to come through Charlotte on the way back. Oh, I gotcha. Just very long preamble here. Um, but the point is, so uh, American says, you know, they ask you some questions. Have you had any of these symptoms over the last however many days or what have you? But um, but that's all it is when you go to get your tickets. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, when yeah. You, to set up your flight. Um, there's... They do not, they're not checking for uh, vaccines or um, recent tests or anything. So no papers. But, yeah. But they do say, you know, check the travel restrictions for your, uh, where you're coming from, where your, you're going to. Your destination. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I checked a bunch of them just to see. And uh, so from Alabama to um, Philadelphia or to Pennsylvania, from Alabama to Pennsylvania, no restrictions. Yeah. From Florida to Pennsylvania, no restrictions. From Alabama to Florida, no restrictions. Yeah. Um, from anywhere to, well, uh, no, I shouldn't say that. That's not yeah. right. From Alabama to New Jersey, like if I was flying into Newark instead of flying into Philadelphia. Yeah. Because um, the, the party and everything was in New Jersey. It's just in southwest New Jersey, so it's easier to fly into Philly and yeah. just cross the line. It's there shorter. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the point, actually. So, But if I was flying from Alabama to into New Jersey... Yeah. There are travel restrictions. Really? You do have to show papers or whatever. Yeah. Um, same thing from Florida in, into New Jersey. Yeah. But there's no travel restrictions from Pennsylvania into New Jersey. Yeah. So I can fly from Alabama or Florida into Pennsylvania and then cross into New Jersey without any... With no no problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and then there was some there also a weird thing on the New Jersey travel advisory website that said that they um, expect you to quarantine for seven days when you're coming into the state from, you know, anything other than an adjoining state, essentially. Yeah. Um, and uh, that they don't enforce it, but they expect you to comply. <laughs> like, oh, okay, well. I, I, love, I love those kind of enforcement mechanisms. Exactly. They're my favorite. And so I, I literally only stayed a night. Like, I was barely in New Jersey for 24 hours. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm not sure I was... I don't think I was in New Jersey for 24 hours, honestly. Yeah. Um, so it just how absurd is it to like quarantine for seven days for an overnight trip? <laughs> anyway, yeah, right. Yeah. Like this makes um, no sense. So it was, yeah. And, and then I was really surprised. Uh, now they do strictly enforce in the airports and so forth. You wearing a mask. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you just come up with little excuses not to. So you go and sit at one of the cafes and you order a glass of water and you sit there and you sip every once in a while and leave your mask yeah. off. Yeah. Wait, um, wait till one of the security guys is walking by to take your sip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so that, I mean, it, it was annoying, but it wasn't yeah, you know, so bad. It wasn't unbearable. Yeah. Um, but on the plane, it's pretty strict, right? Yeah. 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 In fact, I have a story about that. All right. Um, but we'll get there in a moment. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, I was surprised when we were in New Jersey, like went in and out of gas stations and, and things like that, and um, and the hotel and everything, and like nobody was complaining about masks. Really? Um, and in fact, there were a lot of people that weren't wearing masks, yeah. and uh, nobody got on to me. Like the first... Um, no funny looks or nothing? Yeah, the first gas station that we walked into, I went ahead and put my mask on before we went in. Because yeah. I was like in New Jersey because I was expecting this to be a problem. And yeah. I went in there and like more than half of the people didn't have masks on. So I took my mask right back off. <laughs> right. I was just like, yep, this is, you yeah. know, this is, we all know this is a fiction, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't bad. And the venue for the wedding celebration, there was no mask requirement no restrictions, in there. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it was, it was fun. Nice. Now, I did have some family that uh, voiced some concerns about me not being vaccinated. Yeah. Um, but I asked, uh, I asked Bill, and it was his event. Yeah, it, it was yeah. his party. Yeah. And so before I went up there, I was like, look, I'm not going to have been vaccinated when this is going on. So, mm-hmm. um, 
is that going to be a problem? He was like, nope, not at all. <laughs> Can't wait to see you come on up. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he didn't go like, oh, well, as long as you're going to get it after you get back, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> because I, that would have some kind of magical effect. N- no, right. <laughs> um, so, you know, the other family that wasn't so sure about having me around, screw them. It's not their party. Yeah. Well, there you go. And actually, yeah. they, I, I didn't get any grief from anybody while I was there anyway. Yeah. So It's such a ridiculous thing, like yeah. especially at this point. And I say this, I feel like I say this ad nauseum all the time, but it would be different if the vaccine prevented you from spreading it. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't. Like, there's the, nobody is claiming that. So why it's such a contentious thing just makes no sense. Yeah. Well, and that's that's kind of the point. I mean, you know, all right. Well, okay, so let's do the airplane story and then right. I'll go into <laughs> the, the news part of this. Okay. That's not just, like, my personal news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, on the way back from uh, from Philadelphia, um, so I flew from Philly to Charlotte, and then from Charlotte to Pensacola. Yeah. On the flight from Charlotte to Pensacola, we got a very late start uh, because they had to remove somebody from the plane. Yeah. Because he wouldn't wear a mask, sort of. Okay. So. It happened many rows ahead of me. I was in like the second to last row or something. So. Yeah. I didn't actually witness this. This is the information that was passed back to us. It was passed down the aisles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I don't know how. You, you, know, you know, everybody's played that telephone game, right? <laughs> right. So uh, how accurate this actually is, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. But uh, the story that was passed back was that there was a um, there was a guy uh, who was chewing gum. Yeah. And uh, like you have a, a heavier beard than me. Like I have a very short yeah. beard. But any guy. Um, that hasn't shaved in four hours or whatever and is wearing a mask. And if you talk or move your jaw in any way, you're pulling the mask down, yeah. like constantly pulling the mask down oh, yeah. because your little whiskers get caught on the mask yeah. and it just, you know, friction. Scrapes them down. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, the story was that this guy was chewing gum. And so as he's chewing gum, it keeps pulling the mask down, pulling the mask down until it's uncovering his nose. And yeah. the flight staff kept getting on to him to cover his nose again. And he'd cover his nose again, but he'd keep chewing his gum. And so it pulled the <laughs> thing back down again. Um, and then at one point they're getting on to him and he's like, look, it's just getting pulled down. Like your mask got pulled down, um, when you were talking <laughs> yeah. and, uh, they took that as being belligerent, yep. um, and, um, and had him escorted from the flight. Wow. And so when the, the flight attendant was in the back and she was kind of telling us the story, she's saying, um, there was a guy that refused to wear his mask properly after being asked many times. And then he started to get rude with the staff and I was scared. <laughs> and I said, were you scared because he was being belligerent or scared because he wasn't wearing a mask? It's a fair question. <laughs> and she didn't answer yeah. <laughs> that question actually. Um, and then, uh, so there was another thing though, that came up with that. Also, by the way, um, we're sitting there at the gate after this with the door closed yeah. for like 20 minutes after they'd removed this guy from the plane. Yeah. And, uh, so eventually the captain comes on and he says, uh, you know, um, we had a security issue. We had to have somebody removed from the plane. We'll be leaving shortly. We just have some paperwork that we need to do. <laughs> and I was like, can't somebody at the gate do the paperwork while right? we leave? Can you know? we, can we can you, like, email call like... in the information or something? <laughs> yeah, somebody can, is... can you dictate or yeah. like, why do we, we have, have to sit way here and too wait? much technology on this planet <laughs> to be like waiting at a gate because we need to. Something needs to be emailed to somebody. Yeah, bureaucracy never sleeps. Right? Exactly. So, but their bureaucracy is far more important than the rest of our time. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but this would never thing, happen a free market, by the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, now, I I do understand that the um, the staff there is in a weird position because these are all federal mandates, and yeah. you know the the feds have control over whether those airlines can stay licensed. Well, um, that, and they're basically paying, or were at least at one point, just mm. cutting them checks. <laughs> yeah, well, that, yeah, that's true too. Oh, yeah, you're not working. Let me just go ahead and make sure you're too big to fail, right? Yep. Um, and well, on the other hand, they were failing because of federal mandates. Because of also. federal <laughs> mandates, yes. Yeah, so so, it's, it's this weird like I don't situation. Know. Like, can you really? Yeah, you really can't blame them when they're not allowed to conduct their business because right. the government restricted them. Um. And, you know, if the government wanted to give me money, I'd take it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> like, okay. I mean, they t- I, I justify that by, well, they take enough of mine, so get back what I can, exactly. right? Exactly. 
Um, but so another topic that had come up with the flight attendant is, so you remember we, well, I don't know, you never flown with me. So I, from the time I was like 21, every time I flew, I would take a couple of those mini bottles of booze. Yeah. Um, and throw them in a baggie. Yeah. You, you know, because you have to, you know, there, but it's two ounces or less, two ounces of fluid or less. Yeah. Um, and you throw them in a baggie and and go through security with that stuff. And you just yeah. like throw it in the tray with everything else. Your baggie yeah. full of booze. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and nobody has ever said anything to me about it. Yeah. Never. The only time anyone ever said anything to me was uh, when um, I ended up on a plane with a couple of our friends, Tim and Tara, yeah. on the way to my brother's wedding. Yeah. Um, we ended up on the same flight in Atlanta and uh, the rest of the way up there. I think it was in Atlanta. Anyway, um, I must have been flying Delta that time. Yeah. <clears throat> but so Tara has like a gallon bag full <laughs> Of the, they're, they're, they're like 30 of <laughs> these mini bottles in yeah. it. And so on the way up, you know, like we're <laughs> passing them around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like we're, we're drinking. And we were in the back of the plane again. And the uh, flight attendant uh, then told us that we weren't really supposed to have those. And Tara and I said the same thing, which is, well, I put it in a little baggie and put it in the tray as I went through security. And they didn't stop me there. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, but apparently they've gotten much more strict about this. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so, and in fact, it was in the in-flight announcements that you can't have, uh, that consuming outside alcohol on the plane is a federal offense or something. What? And A federal so, offense? Yeah. So the, uh, well, of course, they got to protect the profits of the airlines, I right? Yes, like, man. It's the same reason you can't bring any outside food or drink in past the security. Well, now yeah. you have to purchase that stuff on the other side. Yeah, exactly. Um, at $8 a bottle of water. <laughs> or <whatever>. Right. <laughs> uh, um, it's like it, it, the same thing that they do when you go into stadiums. Right? Yeah, like you can't bring theaters, stuff outside yeah. Like, yeah. and you have to buy our overpriced stuff in here. Yeah. Um, but the uh, guy in front of me was asking the flight attendant about that. Uh, and he, it was just like among a general complaints about the way the airlines have been handling a lot of this stuff. Yeah. And, you know, like you're really making it like it's never been it hasn't for a long time been comfortable to fly or really fun to fly. And now you're making it downright miserable. Yeah. Um, and uh, so he was asking her specifically about the alcohol. And she said that it had been a rule for as long as she'd been doing this, which was like 30 years or 25 years or something like that. Um, <laughs> a rule that hadn't been enforced, apparently. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, she said, though, that they'd been having a lot of problems over the last uh, year or so with uh, with customers, with um Customers, well, is that the right word? Uh, yeah, passengers. passengers. Yeah, yeah, having a lot of problems over the last year or so with passengers. And so they um, and they were connecting it to, uh, you know, consumption of alcohol. And so that's why they were becoming more strict. And I, so this is I where I I was going to say, did you stop them? Because I know, I know exactly where you're going. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so I interjected with, it's not because they're drinking, it's because you've become the mask police. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like now you have this, these... Um, antagonistic, confrontational. Uh, well, yeah, just it these is. confrontations with passengers yeah. about things. All this thing that we all know, and I like. I did continue from here too. So yeah. it, I was like, we all know that this this is just theater. Yeah, like you know, you're just confronting people over something that we all know doesn't do anything. Yeah, <laughs> and, exactly. You know, like, yeah. And um, and she just kind of let it go, and I. You know, I, they'd already thrown somebody off the plane for well, being belligerent. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Being um, what I would consider, oh, what's the word, maybe like lightly belligerent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a light version of belligerent. <laughs> and like, I'm I'm all ready to have this discussion. And so yeah. and so I can I couldn't really have it with her because I didn't want to get flown off, thrown off the plane. <laughs> right. Didn't want to get home. I really wanted to get home. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm going to have it now. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so... I just want everybody out there to understand how absurd it is to wear masks on planes. Yeah. Um, this does absolutely nothing. Like, even leaving out the part where masks in in real-world studies have been shown to do next to nothing, if anything at all, yeah. um, to begin with. All right. So, but now you're on a plane. You're in an aluminum tube with a whole bunch of other people for two and a half hours with recirculated air. Yeah. Okay? And so... I was looking through their, you know, their safety stuff online yeah. and they say, you know, you can feel secure because everyone has to wear a mask. All right. Well, even a perfect fitting mask to start with, 
um, does not filter out viruses. Yeah. Like the, the pores in these masks are too large for viruses. Now, if you have one of these surgical masks, um, at least it, there's a, like a double layer and it creates a, a, um, um, electromagnetic field that's yeah, supposed to that. trap a lot of that stuff. Yeah. But most people aren't that wearing those they're anyway. Wearing, they're yeah. playing, they're wearing these cloth masks that, that really do nothing at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, even without a, uh, um, a perfect fit of a surgical mask, like you're not trapping viruses. Yeah. The only way it helps at all is if you actually have the thing and you sneeze or cough, it limits how far you project which, by the way, stuff. even in the rare situation where I wear a mask, that bad boy's coming down for a sneeze. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, I, I, still, I, I still do use not. The well, I used to. I used the shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. But but the mask is coming down before I shoulder it. <laughs> yeah. Because you don't have a spare mask and you might need one. <laughs> well, that and I just don't want to sneeze into a mask. Like no, that just no. seems unpleasant. Uh, I don't know. I I don't think I've sneezed with the mask on. I have coughed with the mask on plenty. Yeah. But uh, anyway. Anyway. Yeah. yeah so. Um, you, you're an aluminum tube with all these people for all of this time with recirculated air. Now, like I said, on the website, they say, well, we have HEPA filters. Yeah. All right. But a HEPA filter only, uh, only filters out like 300 nanometers, um, and larger. Yeah. And almost no viruses are larger than 300 nanometers. Yeah. I mean, it's designed for like spores dust. and pollen and dust. Right? Yeah. Um, and I, I made it a point, like just before we got on, I was like, wow, I wonder actually how big the SARS-CoV-2 virus is. Yeah. It's about a hundred nanometers. So it, it is a third the size of the holes in a HEPA filter. Yeah. So it's making it. It's yeah. yeah. It's not getting filtered <laughs> out by a HEPA filter. Yeah. So, and actually I would say that one thing a plane does is kind of ensure that if anybody has it, that it gets evenly spread around the entire <laughs> the, plane. Everybody's like, going to get exposed. Yeah. yeah. So the whole thing is just, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. It's just the, just like you said, it's just the other. Yeah. Um, and this is what it, well, go ahead. What were you I was gonna just going to say, going back to your initial thing where, um, with the banning the alcohol, because they've had issues with, mm -hmm. with people on the planes, like it's so crazy because it clearly in that situation, yeah, clearly the alcohol is not the problem, mm -hmm. but you even go into like retail settings and stuff because we, I think we talked about this during at the time, yeah. but, um, like businesses forced to, to, and are being forced to enforce this. Mm -hmm. Like they're having all kinds of issues, just like what you're talking about, because yeah. people who just don't want to comply will be belligerent, you yeah. know, and it doesn't matter if they're drunk or not. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's not, it's not the alcohol that's the problem. It's the, it's the being forced to do something against their it's, will. It's the creating confrontation. Yeah. Creating confrontation, which the, the business I run, we were very upfront. I was upfront with my people very, very early in this. I was like, we are not the mass police. Somebody comes mm -hmm. in here without a mask. That's their business. We're not yeah. kicking them out. We're not approaching them. Nothing. And the, yeah. and the company's policy was to approach them, you know, mm -hmm. and just mention it um but no nah. we're not even giving them dirty looks no no i was like no you, thumbs you, down you no treat nothing. them just like you treat any other customer that comes in here yeah period and i was very strict with my people about that because it's because to me that's the right way to handle it yeah you know well uh did you see um what's the uh the big bur in and out burger Oh uh, yeah, released a statement saying like we uh, you know we're here to please our customers and we're not yeah, um, they weren't. But yeah, yeah, because they were in yeah. some, some of the states they were in. I guess California was yeah. one of them. Um, they had very strict mandates for the businesses and mm -hmm. what they could do, and they just flagrantly was like, "No, we're yeah. not doing this. Shut us down." Yeah. Um, well, I think they did in some areas. Yeah, we're here to provide service to our customers, not yeah, you know, not confront them. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, I, I just, the the longer this goes on, especially the mask thing. Yeah, because uh, I'll tell you, we're we're kind of past all of this now, mm -hmm. which um, the company I work for has came out within the past, well, since we've pod, um, podcast, mm -hmm. um, that so if you're not vaccinated, you have to wear a mask. Like, mm -hmm. that's that's the policy. And then I guess towards the end of the year, we'll have to be tested, yeah. um, which is going to be a problem because at the end of the day, somebody's going to have to enforce that. Yeah. <laughs> And 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 in the position I'm in, I'm one of the people that has to do the enforcement. Mm -hmm. And how do you think that's going to go? Yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out if it's not changed before it goes into implementation. 
And it may very well be because I think that they're going to see big holes with this policy. <laughs> well, and at every step, the narrative keeps breaking down. Um, you know, originally it was the uh, the vaccine is 96% effective and, um, you know, you'll, you'll get two doses and you're good. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, then it turned out that you could still get the the virus, and they said, "Well, that's because of these new variants that have arisen. You know, it's it's because of that that are being transferred through the unvaccinated, which was also a lie. <laughs> which but, also cool, yeah. Um, and then it was like, well, not only, but you can't transmit it. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it was like, well, it turns out you're you're just as transmissible uh, as uh, somebody who's unvaccinated. But it's uh, you know, again, it's because of these new variants that keep arising. Yeah. And then people with the vaccine started getting really sick. But you know, you yeah. won't you won't really get sick. Oh, that but was then they the did. big push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you did. Well, you won't end up in the hospital or dying. But people are ending up in the hospital and dying with the vaccine. Yeah. Um, and then it was like, well, um, it's because, uh, you know, it's it's wearing off after six months. Well, wait a minute. I thought we were twice, two and done or one and done with the J&J. With the, yeah. um, so, no, no, you'll just need a booster. And and for how long? Yeah. Like well, a booster every six months for the rest of my life? Is that what you're telling me I've got to do now at this point? looking that way because even – so right now the, the push is for the third booster. But mm-hmm. I heard a report – couple of days ago it was before mm-hmm. this weekend that they're talking about fourth boosters for the people who initially got it after the first of the yeah. year so like like this there i mean it, this is gonna be a never-ending thing mm. like it's just <laughs> boosters yeah. for life well and at this point there have been as many deaths since the vaccine as there were before the vaccine yeah. um so and in roughly equal period of time yeah. Uh, so it doesn't seem like it has actually reduced the overall death rate. Which um, makes you wonder, what's this thing really doing? Like, what what is it really solving? Yeah. <laughs> like, for, well, and uh, for it to be pushed this hard. Yeah. Like, I mean, I keep saying that this is like a really good example of what begging the question really means. Yeah. Is that there's there's this initial presumption that is never questioned, yeah. and that presumption is that the vaccine works. Yeah. Like at some point along here, you know, it's always some other excuse like, oh, well, you know, the vaccine was developed for the the wild coronavirus and now we have these new variants. Oh, um, the vaccine is wearing off. You just need more of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, et cetera. Well, maybe the question that should be being asked is how effective actually is the vaccine? Yeah. Maybe the vaccine isn't really doing what you expect it to do. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that it's pretty obvious that the vaccine isn't doing what they expect it to do because everything that they told us that the vaccine was going to do up until this point, they've had to retract at some point. And just like we talked about on the last podcast, I think it was the last one, like some of these studies were a little shady anyway. Yeah. So like how much does that play into what the real effectiveness of this thing is well the and the blaming the unvaccinated is starting to fall apart too and i'm not sure where they go from here because now like austria last week was the first uh country in europe to lock down only the unvaccinated they essentially put all of their unvaccinated population under house arrest yeah all right um now they and germany followed suit not long afterwards um and as i understand it now austria has locked down their whole country Wow. Um, but there are even greater limitations on the unvaccinated. Yeah. And so, well, where do you go from here with the narrative? Like yeah. if you if you have arrested essentially <laughs> all of the unvaccinated people and they still have the virus spreading around, I mean, is the next story going to be, well, it's because the unvaccinated obviously are sneaking out at night and running around and affecting us all. (laughs) Yeah, Um, right. Or like at some point, do you have to drop the idea that the unvaccinated are the problem? Yeah, well, Um, well, no, either that or it's like, no, we just got to get rid of the unvaccinated. Uh, Either by force of vaccination (laughs) or euthanization. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a word? Yeah. 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 Euthanization. Awesome. Have, have them euthanized, I have think, would be euthan- probably a more less, eloquent way to <laughs> yeah, say it. Exactly. Or elegant, at least. Um, yeah. So, but that's it, right? Like, like, the government gave this false impression. And this, I said this on the plane to the people around me who, like, seemed well, to be interested in what I was saying. Yeah. So I went ahead and threw this out there. Let yeah. me go ahead and get my anti government stuff out while I can. Yeah. All um, right to uh, an audience that seems amenable. Yeah. Um, and I said, well, the problem here, oh yeah, it was because one of the 
one of the guys on the other side in front of me um, said, well, you know, like uh, one person's always got to be difficult about it. And I said, look, it's not the one guy's fault. It's yeah. the government's fault. Yeah. I said, the government exactly. has created these mandates that they're having to enforce that are creating all these conflicts. Yeah. And the reason that the government did it is because they gave the false impression at the beginning that they had a way of controlling the virus. And yep. now they have to maintain that by seeming to be doing something. Yep. Like they have you to make be it seen look doing nothing. Right. Like you have yeah. to be doing something all the time. So, it, but the truth is that the government can't control the virus. No. Oh, absolutely. And they never could. Yeah. The idea that they could was a pipe dream. It was just a it was just a lie that they sold you so that you would give up more of your freedom. Yeah. Um and Well, and I don't think there was ever really a want for them to control it. Because if they really cared about what was good for people, mm-hmm. a ton of the decisions they made would have been made differently. Well, that's true. Um, too. Particularly with even with the vaccine stuff. Like instead of pushing vaccines so hard, they would have been like, Man, we need to get this country healthy. Yeah, because that's the biggest way to fight this is to be healthy. Yeah, there's a real strong correlation between obesity and, and oh, the yeah. severeness of the and illness. Exactly. I mean, we've had the obesity problem in this country for decades now. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, eat better, get outside, do some exercise, take some vitamins. But you never hear that from the government or any of these other groups. Well, that's it's because always... those are things that you can do yourself or are relatively inexpensive, as opposed to you know. Remdesivir that turned out to kill <laughs> roughly kill a quarter people. of their yeah, <laughs> of the people exactly. that took it regularly, so. um, and and of course that was the thing that Fauci was pushing early on. Whereas ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine were definitely getting taken off of YouTube. By the way, <laughs> um, yeah, you said the actual words. You're yeah. supposed to like abbreviate them yeah, or well. something. <laughs> I, it it just it just lets me know that there's at least one more person listen or watching, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Whoever know. banned us had to have listened, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, the, those things have shown to be more effective than remdesivir yeah. turned out to be, oh, and yeah. and far less harmful, harmful. than remdesivir exactly. turned out to be. Um, but that's the thing that that Fauci was pushing. And I maintain now the same thing that I maintained then, which is the the reason is that ivermectin is roughly like three bucks a day or something like that. Um, uh, hydroxychloroquine is pennies a day. And mm-hmm. remdesivir was $300 a dose. Yeah, yeah. Breaking it in for the pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. This is a big way of, of uh, privatizing public funds again. This is a huge welfare program for pharma, yep. which obviously needs it. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Um, and the, you know, you talk about doing things that help people. There's also been some more statistics and this was something that I talked about very early. Uh, like when we weren't doing podcasts together because we we were were, locked down, um, that I talked about a bunch, which is, uh, all of the domestic effects of this thing. So now they have shown that there was a huge increase in overdoses and suicides in the last year too. Yeah. Um, and they're like, you know, the people that are publishing this data are like i don't know you know i wonder what it is that changed what changed this year that was different from any other year (laughs) and it seems pretty obvious to me and of course that you know there's domestic abuse and like all kinds of things that were going on that are incredibly harmful not just to the individuals but to society as a whole oh absolutely um and they i think it can be pretty strongly argued that they are a result of these lockdowns and these various measures to isolate everybody. Um, it's just bad for the psyche and, uh, you know, and what they keep saying, and I remember Biden saying this specifically that these restrictions on freedom, they work, (laughs) you know, they, they work and they are effective at coercing. Now this isn't exactly how he said it. The first part is, but um, that they're effective at coercing people to be vaccinated, yeah. which is like an absolute, very obvious, the ends justifies the means argument. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're not concerned about morality. We're concerned about the end result. Yeah. We're concerned about you doing what we told yeah. you to do. Yeah. So. Well, and it, it might be that they really think that this is the most effective way of protecting people, and that's what they're trying to do. Now, I do have questions about whether the government ever really believed that they could control the virus. Yeah. But I, I actually think that these that a lot of these people are arrogant enough that they did. Yeah. I, I, and I, maybe I'm still sure. do. Yeah, <laughs> probably. It wouldn't surprise me. You know? But you, there's a whole bunch of counterexamples now. Gibraltar had a big outbreak of the virus. They had almost 100% of their adult population vaccinated. Yeah. But they had a big outbreak of the virus. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, there are uh, roughly half of the people in the hospital 
in um, Ireland uh, with coronavirus are are I vaccinated people. I saw that Although today. Although a majority yeah. of their population, like 90-something percent of their adult population is vaccinated. Yeah. Um, yeah. It doesn't keep you out of the hospital. It doesn't keep you from dying. I mean, it, obviously, it has some impact. It does seem to lower the the possibility, but there's a whole bunch of other things going on that they're not measuring. Yeah. Now, I would make the argument here that it's not that people's behavior between the vaccinated and unvaccinated population is not the same. Yeah. Anybody who's not vaccinated at this point has made the choice not to be vaccinated at this point. Oh yeah, and you... I think that they are probably the people that are less least likely to be following other. Um, protective measures, yeah. uh, social distancing, masking, oh, all yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Like it's probably the vaccinated that are doing most of the other things that are, that are being prescribed to prevent transmission of the virus. The people that are following the narrative. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're probably being safer and not engaging in, in more risky behavior. And yeah. yet they're still getting sick. Yeah. Risky behavior, like going to the fair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Going to the fair, going to your cousin's wedding. Yeah, yeah exactly. That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I've said it so many times on this podcast, it's almost not worth saying. Well, actually, it I is. think it's a thing yeah. that's that's worth saying again and again and again and again, which is that you can't be so afraid of dying that you stop living. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I think a lot of people are way past that point at this point. Yeah. And it's, it's well, the, really a shame. The, yeah, the, the weight mechanisms are people are way more willing to just not do stuff over mm-hmm. fear yeah. than, than they should be. And fear has always been one of the most effective tools of government to keep its population under control. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and, um, we've seen it twice in my lifetime, first mm-hmm. with the terror war and now this. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it was extremely effective with the terror war. Mm-hmm. Anybody that's old enough to remember all of that firsthand knows yeah. exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I don't really have anything more. Um, I, I would like to spend some time talking about the Rittenhouse case yeah. uh, because it's one of those examples of... Um, what Michael Malice says about, or, or the results of what Michael Malice says about mainstream media, that they're, um, they're factual, but not truthful. Yeah. Uh, because like listening to some of the reactions to the Rittenhouse decision, just like people are so ignorant of what actually happened well, that it's in my experience. And I, I have to assume they're getting that information from a media that is misrepresenting like every single aspect of this. Yes. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is, because not everybody has time to sit down and watch the whole trial. And I get that. Mm -hmm. But the media's job is to kind of sum up that trial and give you an overview of what happened. Mm -hmm. And they're just not doing it. Like, at least certain parts of the media are not doing it. Yeah. And that's that's how you end up in the situation where people are just saying these anybody that watched any of the trial is looking at the stuff being said. It's like this is no basis in reality at all. But here we are, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's just it's got it it divides the country up in a really dangerous way. Yeah. Um and I do think we need to spend some time and kind of break this trial mm-hmm. down, but I don't think we want to try to do that today. I agree. Uh we can record after Thanksgiving though? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I don't see anything uh, as, unless something crazy happens Friday should be good. Okay. Excellent. So um well I just wanna add one more thing about the the vaccine that uh Jim I heard Jim you remember Jim Brewer. Yeah. Um half baked and yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, stand up SNL, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so I heard an interview with him on the Megyn Kelly show uh, recently, which I do recommend to people, uh, regardless of what you think of Megyn Kelly. She's a very good interviewer. Yeah. Um, and that's all her show is, is, is just interviews. interview show. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, she has, you know, she has, she says no agenda at the end. There's at least an idealistic agenda i think but yeah. um hey she's still shouting out one of my favorite podcasts yeah well and uh, you know she has glenn greenwald on with some regularity he's always worth he's listening to oh, and yeah. um there's yeah there's been some really interesting people i don't listen to all of the shows i yeah. skip around for things that like oh i know who this is yes that you would be yeah. interested in yeah. yeah um but i didn't really know a lot about jim brewer before this his story is kind of fascinating honestly yeah. um but one of the things that he said on there that really was funny and insightful at the same time talking about the uh, the coronavirus vaccines yeah. is he said, um, never in my life have I seen a medication that only works if everyone else takes it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sick because you didn't take my medicine. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, there, there's certainly something to there's that. There's something in there, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I, I have to wonder at what point people at what point people start asking the question? Well, a lot of people are asking the question. The problem is, is what can be done about it? And that's really like, is going to the streets the answer? Like, I mean, I know there's plenty of countries where that's going on right now. Yeah. Um, I just question what, how much that really does. Yeah. The know. answer is half of the people on that plane taking their masks off. Well, and that's, so when you were mentioning that, that was um, something else I wanted to mention. We need more people like that man <laughs> that was refusing to, that, that was. He wasn't know, even refusing. He was well, yeah, he yeah. wasn't even refusing, but we need more people to stand up and do that. Mm-hmm. And um, like I say, I'm, I know within the next month I'm going to be forced into one of those situations. We'll see yeah. how far I can go with it. But um, <laughs> we need more people. But we need more people to do yeah. it. Like, I mean, it's, 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 but it's, it's, I'll say this. It's hard when your livelihood is on the line yeah. to make yeah, that call. I agree. And all I, all I wanted was to get home. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not saying you should have been one of them. Like, trying well, to... I was. I was like this close to uh, after takeoff when the captain announced that, like, okay, we're you know now we're yeah. we're climbing, et cetera. We're on our way. Pull that mask it's, right on off. Yeah. Well, and to say, <laughs> all right, everyone, we can take our masks off now. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, but the problem with that is not only would you have been hauled off the plane when you got back, you would have been hauled to jail for inciting <laughs> an insurrection. An insurrection on the airplane. <laughs> Like I, we laugh about it, yeah. but the truth is they would have yeah. pressed charges against I think, you. I think on an airplane it's called a mutiny. Actually, is it a mutiny? Uh, okay, I, I think, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the same as a ship, right? Yeah, <laughs> so. it's an airship. It's an airship. Yeah, oh, um, that is funny though, and that no, is it, it. It like went through my head, and I was like, I was so close Ooh, to saying it. Uh, yeah. Well, the the fear would have been was is that they would have turned the plane around. Yeah, that it wouldn't have. That's exactly it. <laughs> that, that they would just land at the next airport. Exactly. And, and haul me off. And there. haul you off there. Yeah. yeah. End up in jail in some random place. Yeah. <laughs> We'd never find you. <laughs> Might have been Hartsfield. Oh, God. yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Well, um, I guess we'll wrap it up there, and we'll uh, we'll get another one out at the end of the week. Yeah, yeah. Um, so sorry we missed last week. It just yeah. didn't work. Tried out. to do a make good. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, yeah. This is exactly this is our this is our bonus podcast to make up for the last podcast we missed <laughs> that we missed. Yeah. <laughs> um, we could be out having drinks and dinner right now. Instead, we're recording for all of you. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and we will be back again soon. Uh, in the meantime, um, follow us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. Uh, is that it? Um, you can always visit the website. I still haven't written anything, but at know. some point, Mike will write us some articles yeah, to yeah. enjoy Mike on the website. Write articles about my um, my discussion, my debates yeah. with uh, some family while I was up there, but um, but maybe not. Maybe you know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see where this goes. I, I still actually have it in my head to write an article about begging the question because I'm so tired of people misusing that. Yeah. Um, but. Regardless of uh, my pedant, pedant, pedantry, that yeah. would be the word, pedanticness, pedanticness, pedanticism. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, we'll be back at the end of the week uh, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Bye. You have to say it closer to the mic. <laughs> There you go.